Dreams though, right? Especially my wife dreams. I mean, she had a movie last night. <laughs> my wife had a movie. See, she dreamed somebody was coming back from the future trying to sabotage our kids. Ain't that something? I said, from the future? Wow. The Lord's speaking in that. And, uh, and so we pay attention to our dreams because that's one way he communicates to us. Amen. That's one of the many ways that God communicates. So I'm thankful for her. Um, we got a couple of announcements before we get started. Um, there is an out, outreach opportunity um, at our South Huntsville location. It's July 9th. They'll be passing our flyers at 9 a.m. I wanted to reiterate that because um, this is evangelism season, you know, so therefore I'm always in that season, but, you know, just so happens that, you know, it's suitable to go outside because of the weather. And, um, and so this weekend, next weekend, July 9th, South Huntsville have an outreach opportunity. They'll be passing out flyers for that location, but also for an event that's coming up July the 30th, a backpack drive at our South Huntsville location. So please be um, aware of that. And you, you have, um, I will be going to both of them because I just love souls and being out there with them. Um, but we also getting ready for our Love Out Loud, ev uh, Love Out Loud event. Amen. And um, some outreach opportunities coming up, so be listening out for that. Amen. So, as your pastor, I have a strong desire to see people win. Like, I, I have a strong desire to see people win. And in doing so, one of the things that God has equipped me to do is to help individuals escape from the torments of and the trauma of their past, all right? And so I have a desire to really see people free, you know, to see people delivered. I knew that um, when Jesus set me free, that was the thing that I needed that helped me in my walk with him. And even as a pastor, and as you grow in the Lord, there are still levels of deliverance that you have to discover. The Spirit of God is designed to lead and guide you into all truth. Amen. So every place in your heart where a lie exists, it is his job to expose it. Amen. And so he will use instruments like myself to help bring these things to surface. So sometimes a relationship can also bring out the darkness in you, not just the good. Amen. Um, and so when a person say, oh, I, they met somebody, oh, I, we, 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 you know, we like the same thing and, you know, we're so compatible and, and they got all good coming out of their mouth. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you know, so when God put a relationship in your life, it just don't be all pieces and cream. That person's personality is designed to bring things up in you that you never thought was there. Right. And I love that about God. I love that about relationships. So sometimes relationships can look look rocky. Amen. And so without getting into the word too soon. I want to pray before I pray. Pastor Angela, can you um, just softly sing? Oh, the love of God, the one you were singing in worship. Oh, the overwhelming. Man, that thing hot, boy. We're going to just go into a, I believe, would be a couple of few minutes of worship. I 
Lord, you're so good to us. And your love is never ending. Your power is limitless. The reach of your grace reach the bottom of my heart and save me and change me and rearrange my whole life. I acknowledge you today. I acknowledge you before this message. I acknowledge you as Lord and Master over this place, over your people, these your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Y'all ready for the word? Amen. The title of today's message is Nostalgia. Nostalgia. And Pastor Angela and my sister, Ivy, they was tapping into it, wasn't they? Mm-hmm. Talking about being reminded. You remember how the Lord set you free and brought you out? And the Bible admonishes us to remember. Amen. Amen. I mean, I mean, continually. These are the things that, that continually be what should drive us as people, is what God has already done. And I pray this, this message answer a few questions. And the questions that I desire that it, that it answers, I believe the Holy Spirit gave me these questions. Why do we go back to toxic things? And how to get unstuck? And how should we visit the past? Would you like to return to your past? Is that, sometimes that question harasses some people. I wished it was like how it was. Amen. Sometimes I think about that when, um, <laughs> when it was just me and my wife before the children. <laughs> I mean, we could go, we used to go work out, go to the gym together. We used to do everything together before children. And so that was the first two years of our marriage. And then Listen, don't take it personal, son. I see you mugging me. Um, But I do enjoy raising my children. Amen. I love seeing them grow up. He's growing into a young man. My daughter's growing into nice, beautiful young women. Um, But it's something about the past. Um, And one thing that gets me in nostalgia is I have a Google uh, phone. And the Google phone send me updates of photos. How many of y'all, your, 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 the photos come back from eight years ago, 10 years ago, today, yeah, today, 10 years ago, this, this was done, right? And I look at the photo, I see my children, time going by right before my eyes, right? I see things, I remember when I look at that photo, I can't help but to feel good, right? It, it produces, um, our personal um, addicted chemical called endorphins, right? And I'm like, man, this feels great. But I see my son, I see my children, I see time-stamped um, things come up on my timeline, memories come back on my timeline, and I can't help but to feel good. I can't help but to think about the good old days. Y'all know that? The good old days. And so... I also wish that I could take advantage of some of the opportunities before things grew up, like Google and Facebook. And y'all remember when Netflix was sending out video? They might still be sending out CDs, but I remember Netflix was sending out CDs, right? Boy, I wish I knew what I know now, right? (laughs) Um, And so you have those good things that come up about your past, and then you have what I call the negative things that also come up about your past. Um, Nostalgia is an emotional experience. It is a sentimental longing and wistful affection for the past, typically for a period or place with happy personal associates. 
It is a romanticized version of the past while disregarding the negative aspects of that season. Amen. So we do this without trying. Um, a lot of things, my wife came home yesterday, said she's seen a pack of gum. Y'all remember the pack of gum that looked like chewing tobacco? Back in the day, it was just lines laying in the bag, and there was a big old baseball hat with a big gob of gum, gum on the side of his mouth, right? But it looked like chewing tobacco. It was packaged up like, and you pull it out, it was stringy and stuff. My wife said she's seen it, but they changed it. Now it's just balls. I said, oh, I mean, y'all messed it up. <laughs> right? So will you help me? I'm going to give you a, a, a quick dose of nostalgia. All right. And I'm going to try I'm going to try to um, hit all the generations that's in this room. But if you know these songs, please repeat them after me. Right. OK. Repeat after me. Now this is a story. A lot of life got twisted and upside. Come on. Come on. Life. I can make a minute. Just sit right there. I tell you. Prince of town called Bel Air. Boom, no, 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 no. But da 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 da. In one Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground. Chilling out. Cool and shooting some people outside with a couple of guys who was up to no good. Try to make a trouble in the neighborhood. I got a little fight. My mom got scared and said, Auntie and Uncle and Bel Air. And listen, come on, came near, fresher than the dice in the mirror. This travel where I now forget it. Your home to Bel Air. All right. Be patient with me. I got another one for you. All right. Everyone who was singing might shut up on this one. Here's a story about a lovely lady. Up three very lovely girls. I can't hear you. All of them had hair ago. Come on, Miss Lily, you know this father. The youngest one. one. Come on, come on. <laughs> down, 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 down. Come on. Do 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 Ray, the Brady Bunch. That tells, you know, the age of the crowd, I guess. <laughs> so I got one more, one more, one more. This is a cartoon. Now, some, you know, if y'all know it, hook up with me, right? Now, this is what me and my wife were singing this morning. It's so funny. <clears throat> Sometimes some crimes go slipping through the cracks, but these Two numb skews are taking up the slack. There's no case too big, no case too small. If you need help, just call Chip, 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 Chip and Dale. Rescue. Chip, Chip, and Chip and Dale. When there's danger. <laughs> Four o'clock every day after school. Ran home just to look, listen, look at Chip and Dale, right? Amen, 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 amen. So this is what just happened was a big dose of nostalgia. Supposed to be for some of y'all, amen. It was for me. I could keep going. You know, do we got one more? One more. Fraggle Rock? Go ahead and start it. Um, I remember this one. This was this is a good one. I know some of y'all, y'all better get this one. Fish don't fry in the kitchen. Don't burn on the grill. Whole lot of cheer out here. Just get up that hill. Now we're up in the big leagues. Some, 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 some. There ain't nothing wrong with that. We're moving on up to the east side. Be there up, 
rocking in the sky. Moving on up, on up to the east side. We finally got a piece of the pie. Amen. Woo, y'all give yourselves a hand. This, what happened, many things happened just now. We sound crazy. But at the same time, nostalgia was kicked in. I mean, it's an emotional, positive emotional experience. Um, and so many of us are being taken advantage of in this way, right? Companies are doing this. Um, they know that we are triggered into nostalgia in many ways. So you have car companies that does it, right? You have the Mustang that's they say it's timeless, but it's just nostalgia, right? It's been around for so long. Every generation catch it, and every generation before it done caught it, and then every generation after done caught nostalgia. Or experience the Mustang in that way. Dodge have done it. Every car company have done it. Because there are always cars that we liked growing up. Whether it ran, and you kind of forget about if it was reliable and everything. You just like what you like, right? The movie industry does it all the time. How many Spider-Man movies can we get? I mean, come on, my God. Not enough? Oh, my bad, my bad. I thought 10 was good, but you know, maybe 12. I don't know everything, amen? Batman, how many Batman movies can we make? Is it enough? If they still making 450 million off of it, it ain't enough, right? I mean, listen, if every time I made the same movie just in a different way and I made $500 million, I would do it as many as I can in a lifetime, amen? But that's from a business perspective. But it is, it is the nostalgic and nostalgia experience that is actually motivating us to go and is motivating those to make it, amen? So if the movie industry has taken advantage of this, the television has taken advantage of this, um, how is God taking advantage of this opportunity that we have or this aspect of ourselves to uh, reproduce um, good um, uh, experiences in our life through the presence of the Holy Spirit? And I mean, just this year alone, we don't have so many, just, our, just so many powerful services, man. So many powerful services. And I have to say that God is so creative, every one of them has been different. Amen. It's just different, you know? You cannot duplicate what God wants to do, right? You can't manufacture it. You have to allow him to do what he desires, amen? So if nostalgia is working, in our, uh, uh, working all the time, how is the devil taking advantage of this as well? How is the enemy taking advantage of your past? Not just to produce good feelings, but also negative ones as well. Jesus warns us of the enemy. Amen. And he was, Jesus was teaching us about the end times. He said, in the last days, this will happen, that will happen. And people will respond to these things happening as if like they responded in the days of Noah. Amen. So people was eating and drinking up until the time it flooded, right? They, they, they didn't recognize or they didn't pay attention to and discern the times that we was living in. And so Jesus warned the people and says, he said, remember Lot's wife. Do y'all remember what happened to Lot's wife? She's turned into a pillar of salt in Genesis chapter 19. Um, he turned into a pillar of salt and, and she did. And when she looked back, Right. The, uh, the, the Bible says that the angels came into uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and warned Lot and his family and let them know that, that that the city was going to be destroyed. You know, I believe God still does that today. You have nothing to fear. The Lord is going to warn you. And the Bible says that when Lot hesitated, the angels grabbed his wrist and said, let's go. Like, you ain't got time to think about this. You ain't got time to contemplate. It's time to go. All right. And so Lot uh, left the city and God destroyed the city. And then the Bible says that his wife looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. All right. And so I want to um, admonish us today that we, I want to help train how should we look back? 
how to get unstuck from our past and, and, and really how to come out of our past in a positive way, in a positive light. Amen? Because our past is definitely keeping us from exp exploring our future, especially when you see cycles. Amen? So we know that Peter went back to fishing. Um, I, I started this message on my knees, and I started asking the Lord. I said, Lord, what do you want to teach this morning? Um, and I heard this phrase, don't go back. Don't go back. And so Peter went back to fishing after, Jesus, after he denied Jesus three times, and they had to go get him. Jesus himself had to go get Peter and say, look, man, we have the souls. I done taught you how to win souls. Put the fishing nets down. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11 says, as a dog return to its vomit, so also fools repeat their folly. Luke chapter 9, verse 62 says, Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. And so I was thinking about all the magnificent things the Lord has done for us in this season and especially, last, especially 2020, how the Lord has really has shown himself to be faithful in our lives. And he has really increased his anointing. I just felt an increase of anointing in this house and on Restoration Church as a whole. Um, especially this year. This year has been one of the most breakout seasons spiritually that I've felt in a while, man. It's been a while. And the Lord really has brought his, uh, shown himself faithful by his spirit and by giving you what you need in this season you're in. Amen. I want to help shed the light of truth, of the gospel of truth to you, so that you don't be deceived with lies. And so, there are <clears throat> the woes. Have you ever got promoted in doing something? And it seems as if your promotion, uh, what I recognize when, I, when, you get, when you get promoted by God, or even in the world, it looks good when you're sitting and looking up at it, right? It looks very good. But many times, those promo a promotion also um, have its woes, right? It has its, it's almost like this. This is how I can explain it. When I became pastor, it was almost like I started over in my Christian walk. I mean, I know that before that season, I'm winning. I'm winning souls all the time. I'm standing on top of the world. The Lord coming through every time. It seemed like I pray just people get healed. It was a very, very good season. Amen. What we call good season. And so when I became pastor, it was like I started all over again. That means I started from the bottom because now it's a whole realm of things that you didn't know. You weren't exposed to. When, before you got your promotion. It is like that on the workplace, too. It's a whole level of learning. Of course, everything you use up until this point got you to this point, but it's almost like, yeah, it's a, more, it's a lot more learning for you to go, go into now because of you being promoted. And it looks good, but you, the thing that got you there is the thing that's going to keep you there. That means humility, uh, willing to learn, willing to take correction, willing to assert when you need to, shut up when you need to, Amen. Those things helps enable you to be promoted when you're humble, cooperable, being willing to follow orders, take orders, give orders. Those things help you get promoted. But when you enter that realm of promotion, it's almost like sometimes you wish you wanted to go back to, to the easy <laughs> yes. life. And this happens when we enter into a new realm and we begin to struggle in ways that we didn't struggle in our last season. We we're going through tests we didn't go through in our last season. It almost seems like that it, this isn't God because it, it, it's not as easy as it was. <laughs> and we begin to have a wistful desire <laughs> and a longing for the past. Amen. Amen. But that new season is where God has placed you. And that new season is where God wants you to go. But your longing for the previous season isn't going to help you move forward like you need to move forward in this season. So the fact is that this is what we need to do. Embrace your new season. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we will not. Say not. not. Give up. Say not. not. 
Give up. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, the King James Version says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. The enemy's job is to try to wear you out. He wants you to give up in your current season and desire the previous seasons of your past, especially when nostalgia hit. I remember the good old days. You remember how it was? He wants you to, he wants you to question your, your, deci your decision to move forward with your life. So I, it's my job to help remind you not to become weary in doing good. And it's something about doing good, how the enemy attacks you. I'm supposed to be, you know, this is how the enemy shocked me. I'm doing what's right. I'm paying my tithes. I'm going to church. Why is all this happening to me? How many of y'all ever heard those words? I ain't even say nothing to them. Why they messing with me? Right? Those are aspects of wearing, where the enemy is beginning to harass you with constantly with um, the longing to want to go back. Say, I'm not going back. And he do this by also presenting to you the good, and we kind of just forget about the bad, right? We forget about the negative things in that relationship. After a couple months of separation, the nostalgia began to hit. But at least I had somebody sleeping next to me. But at least I had this, we would go, I had company. At least I had more money. Maybe I should have just compromised because where I'm at now is beginning to wear on me. And the enemy will begin to wear you out with ideas from your past. But do you even remember why you even left in the first place? So you have, you have, the enemy will have you so nostalgic and whatever you want to say that word, however you want to say it, he'll have you so mixed up in your emotions that you forget the reason why Jesus told you to step out in the first place. Just imagine being Abraham, stepping away from his father's house. And he said, God said, I want you, Abraham, get up. I want you to strike out your father of many nations. I'm going to make you a great nation. Separate from your father's house. Separate from everything that makes you you. Separate, separate. And when, when, when God asked Abraham that, he's asked him also to step away from previous traditions, previous knowledge of how we did things. God wanted to start a new thing in Abraham's life. And we all want a new thing. But what do you do when the new thing and when the old thing is still calling while you're entering into the new that is a great, untapped, taught subject in a believer's life. And you question whether you stepped out and did what God wanted you to do. You question whether <clears throat> this current season is even worth. And if God led you to do it, he knew that everything and all those obstacles between the day you stepped out and the day you received your promise, he knew everything that would happen in between that point. And so he's trying to develop you in some type of way. He has good in mind in why he told you to go in the first place. And so the enemy's job, and that's what you need to, you, I would, I suggest that you create some type of, um, some type of uh, words where God told me to step out and you remind the enemy and your feelings and your emotions that God told me to do this. God told me to do this. God told me to do this. 
and you repeat the will of the Lord towards those counter instructions that the counter decrees that the enemy is speaking to you, getting you to go back and do the thing that you, you was doing before. He want to make you think that there is blessings in your past. He want to get you to trying to reproduce your future. This is how you get you in cycles, right? He want to reproduce the past in your future. So that you just keep going through cycles and cycles and cycles. And God, in order for that to be broken, there's a level of faith where it's scary where you're not, you know, you, it's somewhere you've never been before. You don't know where the next corner is. Have you ever wondered why it's so easy? You've been on a long trip, right? And it's so easy to drive back, right? Yeah. Why does the drive back seem quicker? <laughs> you remember, you're familiar with the route. It's somewhere you've already been. You're not so anxious on if I'm going to miss that exit or if I'm going to get, what if I get lost? Listen, you'll never go anywhere if you think about what if you get lost. Amen. Never go anywhere. What if I get lost? Listen, let that be at the back. You're not going to get lost. But the reality is, why is it quicker to get back? Why is it quicker to go back? Right? Because it's familiar somewhere you've been. God sits in your future, and he guides you to your future. And you mu- that's why it's called trusting. That's why it's called faith. If it was, when you're going back, it don't require that much faith. Because you've already been. Faith is required when you go into a place that, that you have never experienced and never been before. That's when faith is required. That's when trusting. Oh, God, I hope you know what you're doing. I hope you know where you're going. I hope this is the right place. I hope this is the right job. I'm praying this is the right person. That's called faith. Let me get, keep moving forward. But it's a danger in trying to create old, old times. It is a danger in trying to create old times. You must accept new events, new people, new circumstances in order for you to create the will of God, allow the will of God into your life. Amen? So let's keep moving forward. So how do we begin to respond to the longings of the enemy when he begins to pull us and tempt us to uh, back to our past? All right, so I want to I want to give you a couple of tips that Jesus has taught me on how to forget. In Philippians chapter three, verse thirteen to fourteen, New King James Version, and um, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, and this is what Paul he was responding and giving his letter to the church of Philippians, and he was telling them. There are many things that have been added to me, and I've counted it all for a loss for Christ. And then he says here, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do is forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. And I press towards the goal. What is the goal? Christ. Amen. Christ. The goal, the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. What is the call of God in your life? What is God pressing you to? What is the goal? If you're on a journey, what is the end game? What is the destination? Sometimes we don't know that. We're just stepping out on faith. But what's key is to forget those things which are behind. All right? He said this is a, this is a practice that he does. He said one thing I do. That means this is something that he frequently does. He frequently tries to an attempt to forget those things. Now, that word forget in the Greek means to neglect, to no longer care for. And it's very, as a loving pastor, it's very, I have to be, be careful. I have to be very careful, especially as my influence begins to grow. Because I want to love everybody. That's why God called a pastor to be a pastor. He just loved everybody. But in doing so, you will get taken advantage of. You, you, in doing so, you will waste time with people. There are certain people that are sent by the enemy to waste your time. What, the wasting of time is designed to keep you back from accomplishing your destination. When we hit the road, when it's time to go to Orlando, right, there are very little things that's going to stop me from getting to Orlando, right? Food and the bathroom and gas. That's it. 
And we try to get all that at the same time when we stop. <laughs> right? Yep. So, but in life, there are so many things that are designed to halt your, 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 your travel. And so one of my, one of my, but that is also my gift is to love people, but also it's my, it can be a weakness as well. That's why you need other people around you who have different gifts that can help you say, hold on, pastor, hold on, pastor, like a wife or a friend or someone that can discern when someone is in your life to waste your time. And the Holy Spirit will give you that discernment as well. But that's one thing that I've learned is sometimes, you know, there are things that you need to neglect. Why you didn't call me back? I didn't have the, I'm sorry. Right? Why do you respond to my text? Well, I can't respond to 100 texts. Right? That's why everybody shouldn't have your number. Right? I mean, I do want to love everybody. I want everybody to come to Jesus. Right? But there are some people, they are leeches. God used, I mean, the devil uses those people to drain you to where you feel like you don't want to move forward. And the, the enemy has placed them in your life to suck all the life out of you. And the reason as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, um, as a guy who worked with um, plants and it's a reason why we prune. Amen. Because there are limbs that are on that plant that the plant is trying to uh, supply life to and it's not helping. The plant will die trying to supply, trying to supply life to this dead limb. And so as there are weights and dead things and dead people and people that need to be cut off in your life. Amen. But they family and nostalgia. And see, that's how they get you. They'll try to pull on their family. And, then, you know, we've been around since three. And, uh, and uh, you know, that nostalgia start working. Right. But are they going the way God has told you to go? Right. And if they not, then you might have to leave some folks. Might you will have to leave some folks. Let me go on here and help you. And these are people that might be best friends. They might be folk. The, and, and listen, uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. You're so good. You love God. Love y'all. Boy, I'm telling you, God just love each and every one of you. Amen. And, he'll use, and the enemy will use the connection that you have because y'all have a past together. And he'll use that to, to be an inroad into your life. And after you get off the phone, you wonder why you're depressed. After you get off the phone and you wonder why things just keep happening in your life, because stuff got to be cut off. Amen? Amen. Find new friends. Accept your new family. Accept your new job. Accept your new relationship. Stop talking about your old relationship. Being in a new one, talking about the old one. You know, when they do, they do, they do, man, come on. Listen, accept what's new in front of you. Accept what God has given you. Stop talking about where you was and how anointed you was. Man, get anointed today. Go spend 10 hours with them. Go spend two weeks with them. Cut off the TV. It ain't doing me no good that you was anointed 30 years ago. It ain't doing nobody no good. Except the new. Lord Jesus, help me. How to forget. The Bible says forget those things which are behind. You got to forget not just the bad, but you need to forget the good, too. Listen, I love my former church. I love my former pastor. But when God told me to come to Restoration Church and submit to Pastor Huey, man, it was one of the challenging, most challenging things. We ain't do it like this. This is how we used to do it. And Jesus told me to accept your future. And once I accepted my future, my future began to benefit me. It begins to be, the people around you begin to benefit you. The people that God placed in your life, anointing begin to flow from them because God placed them there. But as long as you want it, the, the sentiments and, and you are married to the sentiments and the, and, the, and, the, and the feelings of your past, you will begin to neglect the wrong thing. Forget means to neglect. Remember, I said in the Greek, forget means to neglect. It's challenging, but accept it. Say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for my future. For my it's challenging. I've been there. God chose my pastor. Just imagine having a pastor that you've been having for 10 years, and then God said, no, nah, this is your new pastor. What, Jesus? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, Jesus. You see, when you're dead to self and you want to do his will, 
right? He knows what's best. He knows where your future lies. He knows what anointing is waiting on you to enter into that's going to catapult you into your destiny where he called you to be. He knows these things. You don't. So you're going to have to receive direction from somebody who have knowledge about your life that you don't. That's what's so scary. Because we all want to appear and look like we know where we're going. Right? And when you're following somebody else's instructions, boy, it takes some faith. Amen? It takes faith. Amen. Are you sure this is going to work? Are you sure this is going to work out? Yeah, it's going to work out. I said do it. It's going to work. It's like my son trying to teach them how to drive or trying to teach them how to do something they ain't never done. I just need you to do what I say. When Trinity's driving, I said, baby, turn left. Break. Watch for this car. She needs to listen to me. And when she don't listen, or if I didn't give clear instructions, sometimes I got to blame myself. Like, dang, I should have said something. But <clears throat> let's keep moving forward. Is this making sense? Yes, How should we look back? There is a reason why the rearview mirror is smaller than the front windshield. The Bible don't say you shouldn't look back, but there is a uh, way we should look back. There's a way we should, we should interact with, a past, with the past. Yeah. Amen. And so through the lens, and I, this is when I want to enter into something a little more intimate. Um, many of us can't move forward because we have undealt with trauma and undealt with offenses that either you have done or someone has done you. And so sometimes when you look at certain scenarios when you was a child, it, it triggers you <clears throat> in a certain way in the present. And so if that's the case, then a lot of times we need to go into, we need to get the blood of Jesus. The truth of the cross is this. The, the offenses that was done against you were forgiven by Jesus on the cross. And the offenses that you committed, that you done against somebody, was done by Jesus, it was forgiven by Jesus on the cross as well. So by properly applying forgiveness towards a person who done you wrong in your traumatic experiences, especially relationship, mom and daddy issues, uh, sibling issues, and relationship issues, mainly as a very, 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 uh, common way that the enemy comes into our life and is still hurting us as ch children. But we don't know how to respond with truth, right, in those ages. So many times we have to go back, and a lot of times to, to, to scenarios in our life that, has, that cripples us today. And we are arrested in our development because when these things happen, we, we result back to childlike ways in how we respond. So we're arrested in how we respond to these scenarios because you, Somebody could do something today that reminds you of what happened back then, and it'll trigger that pain, right? So how do we begin to look back and see that, yeah, I was hurt at 10, I was hurt at 12, but praise God, Jesus was with me. Many times the Lord, he rearranged the picture for you. And like Pastor Angela was stating, that even though they was talking about her, he said, I am with you. So... Listen to that. Look at that image. We know that image uh, says a thousand words. Um, that image is before it just showed the children talking about her, right? That's the hurtful image. It showed you alone. It shows you abandoned. It shows that, um, you know, why God made me like this. Begin to reject yourself and all those things. But when you begin to approach that area properly, you go back and apply the knowledge you know now to those scenes, which is you'll see them saying something about your hair and you will say, Lord, I forgive them. Right. This is how you begin to bring healing in areas of your heart that um, that um, that people did over 30 years ago. Right. So when you see that evil done to you. Right. Yeah, you probably should have did something different. But this is one reason got us stuck. It should have coulda and woulda. That is a, those scenarios that keep you stuck, right? Because you can't do nothing about it today, right? Then we try to, what'll happen if that's not dealt with, we'll try to, 
we'll try to handle the present like we should, like you think you should have handled back then. And normally, it's in the flesh if you ain't applying it with truth. I'm going to smack somebody next time they say this to me, right? You see yourself, I should have just punched them right in the mouth, right? I should have just went over there and did something to them, right? Now, that's looking, that's looking at the past from the fleshly perspective. We have to begin to apply truth in these areas, right? Because this is what's going to help you disconnect the strings that the enemy has been pulling on to keep you from moving forward. You need to clip one string at a time, right? Through the present knowledge of knowing the power of forgiveness, the power of, 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 of speaking the truth in love, blessing instead of cursing, doing good instead of hating, right? Reapplying those truths in the, on the screen of your imagination. And this is why God will change your image to an image of healing. And so when you, it's different when you go back to that lunch table and you see God with you. Amen. That's a whole nother scenario now. Amen. That's a whole nother, oh, oh, I wasn't alone. Amen. And it's during those times that the enemy convinced you, don't nobody care about you, don't nobody love you. And it's the exact opposite. And I can guarantee if he's ministering that to you, it's the exact opposite. You just don't know it. Amen. You're, you're ignorant to the fact that you're, you don't, you're not aware of the truth, Right. So, are y'all want to deal with some of that today? The enemy of your soul is guilt. One of the biggest enemies of your soul, it ain't crack, cocaine, it ain't cigarettes, smoking weed. All those things are problems, yeah. But the enemy of your soul is guilt, condemnation, and shame. Guilt, condemnation, and shame. Come on, Pastor Angel. Condemnation says, <clears throat> no, guilt says, Condemnation says you deserve punishment. Guilt says you're never going to change. Shame says you did it again. Shame, man, shame ain't no joke, man. Shame try to tell you that it's something intri in intri intrinsically wrong with you. Thank you, English teacher. It's it, intrinsically wrong with you. It's, it tries to convince you that you're going you're gonna to be like this forever. You still like that. You did it again. Guilt says you're never going to change. Condemnation says you deserve punishment. This is why sometimes we self-sabotage. We mess up good things in our life. Guilt, condemnation, and shame is ministering to you. You don't allow people to love you. Don't allow people to get close to you. Guilt and shame, uh, condemnation said you don't deserve it. Ain't that crazy? The enemy, he's a vicious animal of your soul. And he's tried, he is a, he vicious as a wolf. He don't care about your feelings and emotions. He wants you to experience the worst hurt you could ever feel in your life. Everyone standing. The Lord want to cut off the thing from your past that's holding you back. Nostalgia is a emotional, romanticized version of your past. And so the Lord desires to heal you. I need the leaders to come up. Vaughn, Olivia, 